Good morning. Uh, I'm Paulo Guzmão Guedes. I'm the executive director of the Hall of Biodiversity, which I hope that many of you will visit tomorrow. And uh, I want to tell you a brief word, uh, opening words, to say that the city of Porto is honored and thrilled to receive the 2017 Excite Annual Conference and extends its warm welcome to over a thousand participants from all over the world active in the field of science engagement. We kicked off the opening ceremony with some truly Portuguese sounds and we'll now receive among us one of the hosts of such a prestigious and I hope fruitful international conference. I now call on the stage Professor uh, Sebastião Feidas Verdo, Rector of the University of Porto, Please lend your ears to his words. Good morning, everybody. There is no better way to open this uh, extraordinary meeting than with uh, the Portuguese guitars and all the pleasure that it gives to us, to our soul. Dear Minister of Science, Technology and Higher Education, my colleague and friend, Professor Manuel Leitor, dear President of the Pavilion of Knowledge, uh, Ciencia Viva, Dr. Rosalia Vargas, dear President and members of the Excite Committee in, in the person of, of uh, Michel Bouchel, uh, I hope I've been saying it reasonably well, reasonably close to the, to the fact, dear <laughs> Dear Director of Museum of, of, Museum of London, Mrs. Sharon Hammond, uh, accept my, my words of solidarity for all the problems that have been happening uh, in the world and in, in Britain in particular, and uh, we are all with you. Dear Professor Fatima Marinho, uh, Vice Director for International Relations and Culture of the University. Dear uh, Member of Parliament, our colleague, uh, Alexandre Quitanilla, that is with us today. Dear Representative of the Mayor, of the, the, our municipality, Filipe Araújo, Caro Nuno Ferran, dear Nuno Ferran, we'll speak about you later, conference speakers, delegates, guests, uh, honorable guests, ladies and gentlemen, it is clear that we are very, very honored to host more than 1,000 delegates from more than 50 countries of this world, most of them leading members of science centers, museums, aquariums, zoos, festivals, planetariums, universities and labs, companies, foundations and learned societies. Welcome to Porto. Welcome to a city of culture, of music, as you have seen, of art, of science, of sports. A city with a very human flavor. A city that houses a top Portuguese and European university. A city that for some reason has just been voted European Best Destination 2017. Please do me the favor of enjoying your stay in Porto. I reserve a special greeting to my colleague uh, Manuel Leitor, to our Minister of Science and Technology and Higher Education. It is clear that it is a great pleasure, but more than that, a honor that you take some of your time to be with us in this beginning, in this opening of this conference. Yes, I'm delighted to welcome you for this major world event, Excite 2017. And be sure that these are not words of occasion. The University of Porto is fully committed to engaging people with science and culture. We are fully committed to international cooperation at all levels in all areas of human knowledge. And more than ever, in these times of, the, of, of life, our uh, cooperation mainly European cooperation, is of utmost importance to work out and the way uh, from the, so many problems that we have in Europe and in the world. Specifically, and related to the wonderful occasion of these next three days, we believe that this joint movement for sharing knowledge among teachers, researchers, cultural promoters, art experts, museum directors, is essential to scientific and cultural advancement in Europe and indeed in the world. I want to share with you at this occasion that we have here in the university an ongoing, very ambitious project of recovering, preserving, and exhibiting the museological heritage of the university. 
At the heart of this project is our new Natural History and Science Museum, much related to the history of our Faculty of Sciences with its two main centers. In two weeks' time, on the 30th of this month, we shall be inaugurating the Hall of Biodiversity, which is an unparalleled platform of science dissemination developed in close collaboration with Ciencia Viva Agency, located in one of the most emblematic spaces of Porto, the Casa Anderson in the Botanic Garden, an exquisite science center in which art meets biology to celebrate diversity of life. Next year, we shall be opening the exhibition in the University Historical Building, which includes most relevant pieces of our science heritage. You are going to see with your eyes both projects, and this will be better than words. All this work, of course, has people behind. At the heart of all these initiatives, Excite and Museum, there is a leader with a vision, Nuno Ferran, with a great team. I want into this occasion to leave a word of sincere recognition and of congratulation to Nuno and to the team for the remarkable quality and energy they put in their work, of which, of course, we all benefit, the University of Porto benefits and Portugal benefits. The university was formally established only on the 22nd of March, 1911. But its origins date well back to the 18th century. Today, we are the second largest institution of Portuguese universities, second largest of, Port of Portuguese universities, with more than 30,000 students. 4,000 or more of them international students, and that's a major issue, 4,000 or more, a bit more than 4,000 international students. We are made up by 14 faculties covering all major areas of knowledge. We are also the academic partner of a business school in association with major companies and institutions in the regions. We have 49 certified research units and nine large interface institutes, being responsible for more than 20% of the Portuguese scientific production indexed in the web of science. Several indicators of academic quality show a continuous progress along the years, and particularly a consolidated reputation nationally and at the international level. This high scientific performance has allowed the university to improve its position in the international academic rankings, whether we like it or not, they exist, and it's good that we are there. And we are nowadays in many of our areas in the top 50 of Europe. Ladies and gentlemen, I know that many of you are in port for the very, for the very first time. Therefore, I would like to invite you to enjoy the heritage architectural, cultural, and human wealth and the city has to offer to you. Porto is a city full of surprises. You can find traces of the medieval period, many works of art from the Romance and Baroque styles, neoclassical and neo-Gothic buildings, the old part of the city by the riverside, which for some reason was as received the World Heritage title. Some of the finest contemporary architecture and the bridges linking the margins of the Douro River. Take full advantage of everything that the city has to offer to you. And by the way, if you have an extra day, take a cruise and go up the Douro River. Be sure that there is a breathtaking and relaxing landscape waiting for you, possibly as no other in the world made of mountains, river, and vineyards. I finish as I started. We are delighted to having you here, and of course, we will do everything within our reach to make sure that your participation in this conference is enriching, that your stay in Porto and your visit to our university will be unforgettable. Please work, enjoy, socialize. Thank you very much. Institutions may reinvent themselves and classic museums may find a new life through the inspiration and strong will of individuals. This pretty much describes what Professor Nuno Ferrand de Almeida, Director 
director of the Natural History and Science Museum of the University of Porto, has done. Please welcome him among us. Nuno Ferran, please come up on the stage. Well, good morning. Um, it's really an amazing audience, amazing day, a dream to be hosting this uh, edition of Excite. Um, what was not good news is that I was given only one minute to speak, so uh, uh, this will be really, really one minute and very, very brief, and I just want to say, um, or to send my very special compliments to my Minister of Science and uh, at Technology and Higher Education, Professor uh, Manuel Eitor, and in him, everybody today, uh, this morning. Um, I also would like to compliment my rector and acknowledge his words, um, to say um, that this is starting to be possible because it's not only me, it's a big group, a big group of people, a big group of obsessed optimists. In, Portu in Portuguese, we say irritantmente optimistas. We will. And by being obsessed optimistics, um, we will do a great excite. We will do a great hall of biodiversity. And we will do this uh, first experience of try to merge what was an old and forgotten museum in the corridors of the University of Porto together with the new centers of Ciencia Viva. Because of this idea was also an idea of many other people. I really like to thank Dr. Rosalia Vargas for a continuous support, for a continuous force uh, to be able to arrive uh, here today. And so to finish, um, because this is a starting project, a project that I hope will be part of the city and part of this country in the years to come, I would like very much, I welcome very much any comments, any suggestions, any criticisms for, for, from all of you these days uh, in Porto, at university, in the city, in the museums. Thank you very much and have a great excite. I'm really sorry, but um, now it's my turn to ask Dr. Rosilia Vargas to come on stage. It's really a great time. Well, thank you, Nuno, for the two minutes he gave to me. Okay. Well, good morning, uh, Minister Manuel Leitor, Rector, Sebastião Feio de Azevedo. Uh, Alexandre Quintanilla is the Portuguese parliamentarian, MP, and a scientist. And uh, scientists and friends with whom we have been we have been col uh, collaboration for many years. Um, and I'm addressing you, Humberto Rosa, um, to, to salute all the European Commission representatives who came to this conference. Um, I salute the representative of Porto Municipality, uh, Councillor Philippe. We, we, were so, uh, we, was, we were so well received yesterday. Thank you so much. And uh, dear Catherine French, dear Michel Buchel, and dear colleagues of the board, and dear you all. Well, um, Porto City is so special for me. I studied here in the University of Porto, and my two sons were born here. So you can imagine how I love this city. Um, this conference, as you know, is co-organized by Porto and uh, Lisbon, and we work together so well. 
Um, thank you, University of Porto and its naturally, Natural History Science Museum. Thank you, Nuno Ferra, a good friend and a scientist who loves museums and science centers, a scientist so committed to connect science to society. Thank you, Porto team, and thank you, Lisbon team. They worked so hard, but uh, if you look at them, they look so happy. I also like to mention Luis and Rui, our designers. They are brothers, twins, so we got it on double. Now, a special word to you, Minister Manuel Etour, my dear friend. Um, it has been a long, a long journey over the past 20 years, working together with you and with Mariano Gago. And thank you, Manuel, for having inspired me all these years. We are joining the small group of countries who organized the Excite Conference three times, the Netherlands and the Italy, and now Portugal. The first time, it was in 98, in the last century. The second, it was in 2007. And now, the third, in 2017. Well, one every decade. So, you can book your agenda for Portugal in 2027. <laughs> Catherine please accept our application. <laughs> so, why do we host this conference so many times? Well, because you are the most sophisticated professionals in the world of science communication. It is not just about talking science or writing science. Some of you build and design science centers and museums, others create exhibitions. You open your doors to people, you educate, you do events, you do marketing, business, you contribute to public discussion and a more active citizenship. And you are so diverse too. Different philosophies, perspectives, it does not feel like a corporate conference. You are not monolithical. You are truly political in the sense that you embody so many views, but always look for consensus in such a friendly manner. But there are still other reasons to host this Excite conference. Science and scientific culture have been at the center of political will in Portugal in the last 20 years. This is our way to acknowledge, acknowledging that. But to conclude, you are the main reason why we are here. In a world of alternative realities, in a world where some want to question scientific evidence, like climate change, the quest of knowledge matters more than ever. And because engaging people with knowledge is at the heart of your values and your profession, you stand in the front row of the combat for the knowledge. That is why we are proud to have you here. Look around, life is everywhere. Thank you. Well, Excite is 28 years old and has grown from an association of barely 20 organizations to a network that pulses with the life and ideas of over 350 institutional members. At the center of its activity, we find the Excite Board and, in particular, its president. 
please welcome Michiel Butchel, Excite President, our next speaker. Yes, speech. Thank you so much, dear friends, colleagues, Mr. Minister, honorable guests. Good that we are all together here today in this beautiful uh, building and hall. And it's again with great pleasure that I welcome you on behalf of the board as president of Excite in the beautiful city of Porto this time. I see many familiar faces but how good to also see so many new faces, participants from so many different countries in and outside Europe. My message to all you first-timers is, please feel free to address your colleagues from other institutions, the organization or your board members, to ask anything you want to know or to share your suggestions. Everybody here, including our friends in the Business Bistro, shares a passion for science and technology, understands its unlimited potential if being well used, and the need to keep people connected to so many wonderful but also complex developments and innovations. We understand what science brought us from the past and how we need it, more than ever, to create a different, more sustainable future for all. We also believe in the power of reason and fact-based decisions, because science acts as a backbone and driver for democracy. Just a few months ago, we witnessed a unique event in over 600 cities all around the world. Scientists and science communicators marched for science. Science had become visibly political because of several things that happened. Things like Rosalia said, that may threaten our ideals and democratic values. No, science is not just an opinion. We, as mankind, can solve almost any problem that we created. But we also need to create new perspectives. Endless growth is nonsense, scientifically spoken. With all the knowledge, experience, and inspiration in this room, we will certainly built on to what has been achieved already, and our impact will grow. Now, please let me thank the XI team for their wonderful work and all our friends, colleagues, and volunteers from Portugal, the museum, Scienza Viva, my fellow board members, and definitely the ACPC, the program committee that worked so hard to create all these wonderful sessions that you're going to attend and the speakers, they created for you a very rich and inspiring program. And please give all these people a big hand. Um, it, I will now introduce to you the present board members. Some of them will have to leave us after Friday. This is a sad thing, but this is how it works. Um, and please save your applause, if you want to, for later, after they have all presented themselves. First of all, we have the executive committee, that's me. <laughs> then our past president, you just saw, Rosalia Fargas, Pavilion of Knowledge. The vice president from Universeum Bremen, Germany, Herbert Munda. I don't know, there he is. Um, Jean-Baptiste Debois from the Cité de l'Espace from Toulouse. Uh, he's uh, in charge of the money, the treasurer, and of course, Catherine French, our executive director. Then we have a number of trustees from all over Europe. Uh, Ms. Pilvi Kolok from the AHA Science Center. Um, Vincenzo Ripardi from uh, Cita della Scienza, Italy. Uh, from the Finnish Science Center, Eureka Tapio Koivu. From Muse in Italy, Trento, Michaeli Lanzinger. From the Musée des Sciences Naturales de Barcelona, Anna Omedes. It's working. <laughs> <laughs> From the Norsk, Norway, Technique Museum, Jan Alfred Alverson, Anderson. No? 
No, that's not Jan Alfred. <laughs> but that's from the Parca de la Ciencias in Granada, Ernesto Paramo. From the Swedish Museum, he is not here. And uh, from the Science Museum group, the Science Museum in London, Helen Jones. <laughs> they will stand up and show themselves later. <laughs> and last but not least, from Ustonova Hiska Experimentov, Mihakos. That's our team of trustees. And like I said, um, after the uh, meeting on Friday, of which I hope all new full members will come and use their voting rights, Friday, 4.30, I think. Please come, be there. Um, and let me see. I did not say one thing that I wanted to share with you. Um, I put it in later. It's this, that we as a field have come a long way in, say, 25 years. But there's a long road still ahead of us. Yes, together, we inspire, inform, engage millions of people. We innovate learning. We offer tinkering, coding, sign shows. We support STEM and much, much more. But is it always clear to all necessary stakeholders who we really are and what we stand for? Are we truly agents of change yet? Do we have a clear, loud voice towards governments? We need their support. Is it our primary responsibility to educate on matters like environment, biodiversity, energy transition? Life is everywhere, indeed, is our theme, and it's precious and it's vulnerable. Or is it to foster a scientific culture make science and its impact more accessible, more visible, to promote scientific thinking? And is communicating about science the same as the science behind effective communication? And if so, what is our key message? I love to discuss these issues, but working in the field for nearly 15 years, I must admit that I'm still looking for some of the answers. But what I do know and have seen is that we as a field are still growing, are getting bigger and better, more often being recognized as an important voice by scientists, research institutions, politicians, and our audiences. We are connecting to new networks and themes, like UNESCO's strategic development goals. Yes, we live in a world that's changing faster every day, is getting more complex and unbalanced. Smart solutions, new economic models, civilians taking grassroots initiatives, they all do help to maintain and improve our lives. And our contribution as science promoters and communicators is, in my humble opinion, that we offer a positive, realistic message without hiding the bad news. Thank you very much. Now I call upon the stage Catherine French, Excite Executive Director. Dear guests of honor, dear colleagues, dear friends, Sometimes we have to learn to forget. We have to forget what we do to remember why we do it. Forget the recipe and think about the dinner. We have to forget small things to remember the future, but we cannot forget the present. You, you are the present. Some of you come from far, far geographically and also far financially. And I thank you for being here and not somewhere else. I thank you for choosing a profession by which you shape a society where life counts, where counting lives does not make sense, where every life and every idea can go everywhere peacefully, where science, its reasoning and results, supports decisions that affect everyone's life. 
where being alive means being alert, conscious, growing and adapting, tolerant and resilient. Is life everywhere? That life, the one we work for and cherish, is not everywhere, and it is somewhat endangered. Yet we science communicators, we do so much to preserve and enrich that life. Who else blends culture, science, and society like we do? Who else develops scientific citizenships to million, I mean million of citizens? Who else can teach not freedom from something, but freedom for something? Who else can turn reason into passion? We nurture the future in little ones. We help some to code and others to decode science and technology. We bring together the countless voices and islands that make up our world to create scientific meaning over mayhem. We are a focus for society. Focus as for fire, the old sense of the word, and focus as a point of convergence. We radiate and receive, we emit and welcome. Nowadays, science communication is needed more than ever. Your community is expecting you. Society is expecting us. We need to and we will focus on our values, take an even stronger stance for science and fight against science exclusion. Forget the fringe and go back to the core, back to the heart, back to the heart of the matter, back to what really matters. Cut the jargon, but not the poetry. Cut the meetings, but not the genuine encounters. Cut the reports, but not the responsibilities. Let's cut the smog but not the science. The intellectual Edward Said wrote, politics has much more to do with connecting things that are normally disconnected, with looking at taboos that are usually in the closet, and not simply going with okay things because they are okay. Now, is that kind of politics still an option for us? Can we still wait? Sorry, it's not on the shelves anymore. Out of stock, you should have arrived earlier. During this conference, we will forget some things. We will reflect. We will step back, but only to better step in. It's about time that we um, step in this conference, don't you think? But just let me um, thank our two conference host, the University of Porto and Scienza Viva, whose teams were totally focused to make your life easy and enjoyable so that you can let both your heart and your head speak up. Nuno, Rosalia, your team are just simply of an amazing quality. And my team loves to work with you, team. Last, I would also like to thank the Excite sponsors who make our work possible, and mostly the Kavli Foundation, for their generous support for the keynote speaker, Alice Roberts, on Friday. We are happy to welcome the Kavli Foundation in the Excite community. Now, <clears throat> when you think about it, life is a fabulous DIY project. We start from scratches. We create wonders out of not much. We make our life. And you, science communicators, are great at doing this. You are so resourceful, so powerful. So for you, from an old Persian poet, Attar, having drunk entire seas, 
we remain quite surprised that our lips are just as dry as the shore. And we continue to seek, to seek out the sea to dip without seeing that our lips are the shore and we ourselves the sea. I hope this Excite Conference is as inspiring for you as you are for others and for me. Thank you. Science engagement has been seen as a vital field of development by many Portuguese governments, and this helps to explain why so many young people in Portugal follow a career in science. This tradition has not been denied by our current government. Please welcome Professor Manuel Litor, Minister of Science, Technology and Higher Education, who graces us with his presence. Good morning, everyone. I understand that you have been particularly engaged on hands-on activity, so let me start very briefly with four questions. First, how many of you know that in the last CANSAT exercise driven by ESA and the ESERO initiative was a Portuguese team, a team of Portuguese kids from Azores that won the CANSAT? How many? Great. How many of you know that um, actually last year, Portugal won the record of number of days, fully consecutive days, fully run by sustainable energy? Actually, four full consecutive days run under sustainable energy sources. Great. How many of you that here in the city of Porto, actually, there are the leading place for um, um, cancer surgical pathology? Great. How many of you know that we have a scientist in our parliament leading the Committee for Education and Culture? Good. And all of these, I will understand are the result of what we have been called under the, uh, for some years the effect ciencia viva. In other words, the science effect in the Portuguese society. And these are good news, but we need to do more, much more. And that is the reason why we welcome you all here in, in Porto, in Portugal, because we do understand that science culture is actually the way we need to understand that life is, um, is everywhere. And we need to do more, much more that we are still, uh, still doing. Uh, um, about 30 years ago, when José Mariano Gago launched the founding principles of science policy in Portugal, the key role by that time was to understand that um, science does not survive in uh, social isolation. By that time, we were training roughly 300 new PhDs per year, and those PhDs were closed in their offices. Now we train essentially 3,000 new PhDs per year, and we run a network of 21 science centers. And this is what we call again the effect um, in Ciencia Viva. By the same time, when the Excite Network started with the first conference in the 90s, Portugal it was not known at all. Now we share the countries that have the 1% um, with papers more seated um, at, the world, um, at the world level. And that is the reason why, first of all, let me acknowledge all the professionals of science communication and um, um, science um, culture at general, because 30 years ago, when the Excites Network was giving the first steps 
no one really could understand if we could really develop in Europe at large, but also at, at, um, at the world level, the profession of science communication. And we owe that to you, to all of you that have shown to um, European citizens, to world citizens, that in fact, science communication is a profession, and is a profession in our active lives in every modern society. Let me also thank the EXCITE board, certainly the past president, Rosalia Vargas, but also the um, existing president, Michel Bouchel, and all the, the, the board members for keeping it doing, for your e continuous effort to make EXCITE a reality, not only within science centers, but in society in, in general. And certainly, let me very much thank uh, Ciencia Viva in Portugal, the network of uh, 20 science centers, and certainly Rosalia Vargas, Ana Noronha, Carlos Catalão, and all the um, amazing team that is making all these events possible. Last but not least, let me thank the University of Porto, the Rector Sebastião Feito de Azevedo, the team of Nuno Ferran, that has very actively brought this, um, this conference to the city of Porto, and together with the Ciencia Viva, has also opened up the University of Porto by setting up a new set of science centers and science communication um, activities. But I believe more than just acknowledging, I believe this conference should also uh, take the opportunity to better discuss why we need science communication at large and science culture um, in particular. And I say this because we live in very unique times. Let me mention three facts. Two weeks ago, the new American administration presented to the Congress the worst science budget for the last 30 years. And this is not actually nothing that will not impact at the world level because we know how, how powerful is the overall um, scientific system in, in the American and North American society. And the figures are amazing. Probably we all know that they will be um, uh, scope for change, but the reduction in the NIH budget is of 20%. The reduction in the, in the, in the, the NIST budget is be, um, above 30%. And the reduction in the, in the public budget for science culture, as currently discussed in the Congress, has decreased for more than 50%. Which will be the impact of this? At the same time in Europe, we live in very interesting times of discussing for the very first time the leaving of one country, United Kingdom, from the European context at large. And in the last three months, the United Kingdom has also lived terrible attacks um, and is facing a unique um, movement against uh, tourism. But there are also good news. Early this morning, three hours ago, the European Parliament voted by a well, overwhelming majority a new program, PRIMA, the Partnership for Research and Innovation in the Mediterranean area. These are very good news. Europe is also opening up to a new world, to the Mediterranean zone, certainly by bringing Middle East countries and um, North African countries. And the only reason this is done is because of the role of scientists. Is, it was impossible two years ago to even imagine that we could sit in the same table, people from Israeli, from Jordan, from um, um, Arab countries. And so the role of science diplomacy, which also, with the, the leading help of European citizens and European scientists, has also promoted the inauguration last month of CESAM probably the most important result of science the diplomacy and science communication at large in the Middle East over the last 50 years, certainly after the Second World War. So it is in this complex world where we see good signs, but very concerns, very large concerns for science at large and science communication that we should really understand 
why we need to better um, scope and understand the role of science and um, um, communication. And I do believe, and I've been discussing this particularly with Rosalia, that it is very important in our current understanding of science policy to clearly, to clearly stress the need to keep the mission of science centers because they should not live up of their unique and very critical mission to promote science education, to promote science for all in a very um, clear way. And the message that we have understood from the last 20 years of the role of these science centers should definitely be kept straightforward in a very pragmatic um, mission. But if this is true, we also have understood that we have an, a number of um, new challenges that cannot be uh, forgotten by those running science centers and those participating actively in science communication like um, all of you. And I'm particularly referring for the need to increase at large the participatory of citizens, citizens at large, in the process of better understanding science. If the movement, very much led by Excite and, and many of you over the last 30 years, and essentially was driven by the issue of the public understanding of, of, of science, today we certainly need to go beyond the understanding and the communication of science, but also involve citizens at large participating, namely, in agenda setting processes. And this is a challenge. It's a challenge certainly for scientists at large, it's a challenge for science policy, and it's definitely a, sign, a, a great challenge for science communicators. How can we really keep the mission of science centers, but at the same time engage people at large to, the, to help scientists define their agendas, their research agendas, in a way that we clearly address great social challenges, in a way that people not only receive the information of scientists, but participate in the process of setting up their agendas. And we clearly understand, actually, from work of many of you, that movements towards the so-called science citizenship and that issues are important, but do not, do not replace the key importance and challenge of participating at large in agenda setting for R&D. And that is certainly a, a great challenge for the years to come in terms of science, of science communication. But definitely, if we have new challenge, my point is why is so complex, why is so difficult to understand that science communication is, is important and science communication certainly rely in science and in the values of science, and why is so difficult that governments at large increase their budgets for um, um, uh, research activities, for scientific activities, and why, when we look back to Europe over the last 15 years, we see that the overall research budgets at European level, either the Commission budget and the addition of the budget from all the European countries has been stagnant, and recently the, the, the United States have announced a large reduction. Why is so complex? And certainly, in my understanding, is that we need to go back to the founding principles of science communication. And let me reference three people which were particularly um, uh, pedagogical at a world level, but certainly also in Portugal. John Zyman from Cambridge, namely in his work on reliable knowledge and many others, and the way he has shown us that science is social. And therefore, the complexity of understanding science do require for a strong participatory process of all levels of society. Second, Joan Solomon. In his last book, actually it's just published after she has passed away, based on the number of very detailed interviews in a small village close to Cambridge, she has shown us how difficult, but how important it is to engage every citizen, 
every citizen in the process of better understanding the role of science, and that every citizen have a different opinion about the role of science. And therefore, one does not fit all is definitely a lesson for science communication and the need to better understand the role of each individual in the process of better understanding the role of science in society. And my third reference is definitely José Mariano Gago. He was actually very clear in trying to explain to the world, and certainly to the Portuguese and European society, that science is a battleground. Science is not consensual. Science do require a political debate. And that debate is good. If there is no debate, if there is no contradictory, it's because science is irrelevant. So the relevance of scientific activity and the, the, the relevance of science communication at large do depend on the way we formulate the problem and we really create debates, debates essentially associated with the controversy of understanding the political dimension of, um, of science. And this is actually a message I would like to call your attention because of the times we live and we will be living in the, in the next year in Europe. Uh, we are particularly addressing the evolution, as you know, of the current Horizon 2020 program and the setting up of the new framework program for R&D in Europe. In early July, the committee shared by Pascal Ami will present the first evaluation report. Several uh, countries, including Portugal, has already presented a position paper. In our paper, it is clear, it is clear the need for Europe at large to emphasize the overall um, financial and commitment to R&D, but also to science communication. And this is a process which is open in Europe. The debate will last probably for one year until the summer 2018, where the European Parliament needs to approve a new proposal by, um, proposed by the, the European Commission. And therefore, the debate is all your own debate. For the good of the world, and certainly for the good of European citizens, we need to better understand and to engage everyone in the debate which is going on and which will happily be, act, be more and more active by the end of this year um, when the overall set of elections in the different European countries will be um, closed and the discussion at the European level will be strengthened. Science and society is definitely a political dimension and we do require your collective effort to better, to better discuss the evolution of the European framework on science and technology and innovation at large and its impact in national, in, in, in national um, initiatives. And this is important again following the words of Rosalia, Michel and uh, Catherine, because we are not just discussing the budget of a few research centers. We are discussing values. And the values of science that can only be achieved through science communication are the values of the European way to understand tolerance and certainly openness. And the way Europe needs to open, to be open to everyone, to integrate everyone that really wants to understand uh, the values of science should be very, very clear in the definition of the current European um, framework. And that is the reason why your profession as science communicators is so important and the role of science culture has become absolutely critical for the evolution, certainly, of the European um, um, society at the world, at the world uh, level. Certainly, we need to give and to receive, and you science communicators are very much used to give and to receive. And certainly, this is the reason why the title of this conference it's, is so enriching ourselves. But I will say that Life is everywhere if science and science communication is everywhere. Thank you very much.
Uh, I had the good fortune of meeting uh, Professor José Maria Nogago, and I was always impressed with his clear views of the paths of scientific development and the importance of engaging the community. As such, it is only befitting that Excite Awards bear his name. Let us hear from Sharon Ament, Chair of the Jury of the Mariano Gago Excite Awards. Sharon, please come up on stage. Wow, we've heard this morning why um, excellence in public engagement with science is so important. And the Mariano Gago Awards for 2017 really brought forth a huge amount of talent, uh, which I had the great pleasure of assessing with my other jurors. It was hugely um, a wonderful experience and a great privilege to see all your work. Mariano Gago really espouses or espoused the values of Excite, as we can see here. This was written after his death. And all these lines um, really go to the heart of what Excite is about and goes to the heart of what these awards are about. We had many uh, submissions from right across the Excite network which really showed the breadth of what we do and the ways in which we are engaging many, many hundreds of thousands and millions of people. I'm sure Mariano Gago would have been pleased to have read all your submissions because he would have seen you doing this in your work day in, day out. Mariano Gago was a founder of um, the LIP laboratory, and we're really pleased that LIP have uh, supported these awards for the second year uh, running. Uh, we are grateful for your support, and it's enabled us to reach out right across the network and to give such great awards, which I will go on to now. So the jury, here we all are, all four of us. Uh, we reach from Singapore to Copenhagen and New York. Uh, we spent a number of hours going through all of the submissions and had a deep discussion about them. Um, it, one of the great things, I was a bit worried uh, when I asked um, these people who are very busy people to join me on the jury that they would find it an onerous task. Uh, they didn't, they found it a wondrous task. They were lifted, their spirits were emboldened uh, because we were able to get an overarching picture, which is a very rare thing of all of the work of Excite members. And it made us see the breadth, the depth, the richness of what we do day in, day out. I, we did, most of the um, three of us were meeting in Singapore when we did the, um, uh, sorry, at the jury meeting, and, I, and two of us had very deep jet lag. Um, the jet lag completely went after we finished our session and had arrived at the two winners of the two categories, and we wanted to give one very, very special award, which I'll go straight on to now. So, we read all the submissions, and as you know, we were looking at two categories only. But one submission really came out, uh, floated up through all the work that we were presented with for something really special. This organization is doing work at the cutting edge. This organization is working with uh, members of society in a way that simply is, is very difficult. And we wanted to give them a special mention because they're doing work which everybody, all of us need to do and shows, and they have shown how a science centre can step up to the plate when times are really difficult. 
Our special mention goes to Noesis, the Science Center in Thessaloniki, which is doing exceptionally courageous work with refugee communities and refugee camps. And I would like Thanasis Kondonikalau to come up and tell us all about it. Thanasis. Let me say a few words. In my minute, I think, starts from now. OK, thank you. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, it's my privilege and honor to receive this award on behalf of Noises. First, I would like to thank our Board of Trustees, especially our President, Professor Mr. Sialas, and our Vice President, Mr. Plionis, for making this project possible. Also, my colleagues and staff that they work hard, and they are very committed to it. As science, not afraid to explore the unknown, when we started the program, we weren't afraid for the reactions and the difficulties. Thank you very much for the recognition of our effort to make society better and more cohesive. We are deeply moved and happy that this award is given to us when everyone in this room would have done exactly the same thing if found in our position. Our objective is to help the refugees, the children, the parents, the family integrate to our system and culture and become a part of our society, not to keep them apart. In the end, it's all about humanity and solidarity. Those children, in a very short time, will be part of the Greek community, and in September, they will be attending the Greek school system so let's say that mission accomplished. We continue the project for the next coming years. We must have no discrimination. This special mention, this award, we dedicate it to all those people that lost their lives in the Aegean Sea, more than 10,000 people, trying hard to find an opportunity for a better, peaceful, and happy life. And as my kids would sing, so I will try to sing it. We're only human after all. Thank you very much. I, I hope you can see why we simply had to give this award. Uh, one of our jurors was in tears when we read the submission. And it was just simply the right thing to do. And I think remembering that, doing the right thing, is really important. Now, we had two other categories that we were looking at. Smart, the smart and simple category. We all know that many people in this audience work with very limited resources. It's not the money we have, but it's the talent we deploy, the energy and the creativity that we bring to making our work a huge success. This category was really different because we asked people to nominate a peer project or a peer organization. So the nominations came from somebody else, and then the organizations wrote up their, their submission. So it was a very special category. We didn't know how it would work, but it worked very well. So for smart and simple, I would like to announce that Traces have, are the winners, and I'd like the Traces team to come up and give us a presentation.
Yeah, well, <clears throat> it would be inappropriate to start dancing now, so I will postpone the honest expression of my joy to after dinner tonight. Right now, I will just say that uh, uh, this project comes from the convergence of many ideas that were born in many different wonderful projects of, uh, of a great team, all of them contributing to that, but also of many conversations that took place, every conversation is a treasure, that took place in, this, uh, in these groups. And so I'd like really to thank, in particular, Paola Godari, sister of so many projects, all the tinkering studio people, all the science gallery people, those who helped us think out of the box, th think differently. And also a big thank to all the open source community that instead of bringing their money to Panama, they share their knowledge freely so that we can copy and win a prize. And uh, I think Sandrine will tell you more. So now let me tell you what is Science Fugale. It's going to take an hour and a half. Sorry, Julie. So Science Fugale is more than just an exhibition. It's an exploration. The topic is how to make low-budget science. So we explore the, uh, the crossroad between maker science, uh, cooperation for development, and uh, scientific research. The objects that we displayed are directly coming from public workshops where the visitors made them. And even now, the exhibition is continuously fed with new ideas and many events or even more tinkering workshops. Uh, so, in every step of the project, we had an illustrator and a narrator who uh, really help us infuse a real identity and a real life uh, in the exhibition. And it seems to me that the more we are exploring, the more the exhibition is going to uh, become a living organism, um, involving and growing with its public. And I, I just say a word to present one of the objects of the exhibition, which is a centrifuge made from 3D printing, okay, and a recycled hard disk drive with this model spinning the 3D printed part. It was made by a collective in Catalonia, open source, and it's, it aims at producing one's own analysis of blood and urine. It's one of the objects, if you want to know more, come on Friday in the makerspace. <laughs> Thank you. A really imaginative project um, that Im impressed all the all the all the jurors. Uh, the second um, category was sustainable success, and we were looking for um, initiatives that can demonstrate real <coughs> excuse me real success over a long period. Um, the organisation that won this absolutely blew us away with the. Uh, societal impact, the bravery, and their demonstration over time of, of the, the, the impact of their work. The award for sustainable success goes to Dialogue in the Dark. And I would like Orna Cohen and Andreas Heinecke to come up to the platform. Wow, <laughs> 20 years of excite, even more. For those who don't know what is Dialogue in the Dark, is a nutshell, is an exhibition in total darkness where people in small group are exploring daily environment as a park, a market, a, a cafe, and there are three dialogues with myself, with the other, and with the otherness, because the people who guide and help the small, the people, the, the, the visitor, are visually impaired or blind. You imagine what's happened, swap of roles, the people who are sighted become disabled and the sighted have the, the power and the, the asset to show and to explore the unseen. We are very happy to have this award because it um, shows our unbreakable beliefs that the exhibition are catalysts 
for social transformation. This award is an honor not only for Dialogue Social Enterprise, for our development and our work, hard work, but also for uh, all dialogue, the current dialogue uh, in the dark venue worldwide, and like you see here in the slideshow, but also the past for the last 29 years, dialogue in the dark, and some of you in the room can receive part of this award. Andreas, the founder of Dialogue in the Dark, some word? A very, very clear distinction uh, between uh, who is doing what. So Honor is a CCO and I am the CEO. Honor is a chief a co content and chief creative, but most of the time the, the chief critical officer. And I am the CEO, that means for mainly for a chief endurance um, and a chief entertainment and most likely the chief emotion uh, officer. And I mean, for me, some, there is a certain natural link uh, between my role as a chief emotion officer and Excite, because Excite actually stands for me where emotion comes on site. And my emotion literally came on site 2001 when I had the chance to be at, the, at my first Excite meeting in Lule uh, in up north in Sweden, where I met, I think, this wonderful lady. And I think the success of sustainability can be easily seen because we are married uh, since then and it's just wonderful. So that means, uh, in a nutshell, I think um, the Excite meeting has a lot of, how to say, uh, let's say additional collateral uh, benefits, and I hope uh, that you have, uh, let's say, that in Porto, your emotion comes professionally and personally uh, on site. And all this is possible for me. I'm not an, a science communicator as such. I'm a social entrepreneur, and I'm just using exhibitions for social change. Uh, comes came into place because I haven't heard about Excite just uh, through one uh, single person. And without a single person, I definitely would not be here. And this prize we receive today is definitely very, very much and deeply, deeply much related to Miko Milikovsky, who is over there. So please give a big, big applause to Miko and thank you so much for the long, long friendship and all the support you gave us. Thank you so much. Miko. Kitos. Kitos, kitos. So finally, I would just like to um, say two things, one official and one, not a, one unofficial. Um, one, uh, look out for the awards, uh, 2018 awards next year. We will be announcing them. We keep the application forms very simple, um, <clears throat> excuse me, because we want as many people to apply as possible. The applications this year, as I said, was astounding. So please do think about submitting for next year and we will send out information as soon as we can. Finally, the unofficial thing, I'm from Britain. Science communication, science endeavor is international. Regardless of what happens over the next two years, the international community engaged with us and the British people in the whole endeavor of uh, public engagement with science is not gonna go away regardless of any stupid bloody decision that our country has made. So.
The beautiful music that you heard throughout the ceremony uh, was performed by Paulo Soares on the Portuguese guitar and by, uh, and by Rui Ferreira on the six string guitar. Uh, thank you, Paulo. Thank you, Rui. The conference is now officially open. We, we invite you all to go downstairs to the business bistro to have your first coffee break of the morning. Thank you. Have a nice conference.